Premiere's new masking tool is game changing. I can get rid of my background just like that. And this is just the start because we're gonna go through how easy it is to achieve these popular effects and transitions using these new masking tools. Let's jump on in. Currently, the new object masking tools are only available in the Premiere Beta app, so be sure to install that from the Adobe Creative Cloud app. If you're watching this in the future, it could be in the main app and you'll see it there. Now that that's out of the way, let's get into the basics. Here in the toolbar is where we'll find the new masking tools, mainly the object mask tool. With this tool selected, in the preview window, whoa, what is that accent? In the preview window, in the preview window, we'll see that it automatically detects the subject in our scene. So we can just select that, or if we wanna select another part of the footage, we can just draw around that area to select it. To remove something from the selection, just hold Alt or Option if you're on a Mac, and draw around parts we want removed. It's kind of like using a simplified version of the Roto Brush tool inside of After Effects. And once we're happy with our selection, go to Effect Controls and our mask will appear under Unassigned Mask. Here we can select the button to track the mask forward and backwards. And after a couple seconds, we're done. But since this mask is unassigned, it has no real effect on the footage. So what we need to do is drag it down to the opacity tab and all the parts outside the mask will be removed. We also have the usual options here under our mask, such as feather, expansion, and of course the option to invert the mask. So these are the basics and having these new object masking tools opens up so many possibilities as editors. For example, instead of using it to make a cutout, we can add Lumetri color to the footage and drag our object mask down to the effect. Now, any color adjustments that are made will only affect our subject. So I can quickly do things like change the color of the car by moving this hue versus hue line right here. Or maybe I can invert the mask and make everything except the subject black and white. That's another option. We can also easily create an outline around our subject by moving the object mask back up to opacity to create a cutout. And then we'll duplicate the footage to a layer above. Now on the layer below, Let's remove the object mask so only the top layer is the cutout. On the top layer, I'll add a tint effect to quickly turn the car into a solid black color. Then let's right click the top layer, new, nest. And this nest is where we will apply the stroke effect, which is also a new effect inside of Premiere. Now, all we have to do is change the blending mode of this layer to screen to get rid of the black areas. The reason why we do this is to isolate only our stroke layer. This will make it easier for us to stylize the outline. For example, I can change the stroke color here, add some glow to make it pop, and maybe even animate another mask on top to use it as an outline reveal. Another really good use of the object mask tool is to add overlays on our subject. So let's start fresh here. Let's start by duplicating the footage to the layer above, and then we'll right click and nest the top layer. With the nested layer selected, we'll pick the object mask tool to create a mask on our subject again. Then we'll drag the mask down to opacity to create a cutout. Now we can double click to open up our nest in another timeline. And here we can drop in any type of overlay footage. I got this glitchy one from Artlist. So let's scale it down a bit to only cover the area of the car. Back in the main comp, you'll see that the overlay only appears where the car is due to our mask. I'm going to change the blending mode to screen and add Lumetri color to adjust the curves a bit so that way we can actually see the car underneath our overlay. Next up is the wipe transition. And you might be like, Gal, but it's pretty basic. And I'm like, yeah, it is simple, but it's one of the coolest and most useful transitions in the book for editors. Basically, we're using an object that passes by the camera while covering up the frame vertically or horizontally as an open door into another shot. For example, I can use this tree that passes by the camera here. To achieve this transition, we would normally have to manually animate the mask 
to follow the edge in order to achieve it. What we're going to do here is come down to the toolbar, press and hold on the object mask tool, and here is where we will find the ellipse and rectangular mask tool. Let's create a rectangle mask and move the corners to align with the edge of the tree. Then in the effect controls panel here, we can keyframe the position of the mask, making it follow the tree. Once done with that, let's move the mask down to opacity to create a cutout and bump up feather just a bit to match the edge blur of the tree. Now we can place the second shot underneath this layer to complete the transition. Note that this transition works best when the two clips that you're using have movement that's going in the same direction. So that way it feels more seamless. Now with the object mask tool, we can use it to mask the object in the foreground for us to achieve the same wipe transition. It is however good to know how to do this manually because sometimes the object mask tool doesn't work well when the objects you're trying to select are slightly blurred. For me in this scene, when I tried to use the object mask tool to select the tree in the foreground, it struggled. But if I select the trees that are closer to the subject for the transition, the object mask tool has a much easier time since the trees are more in focus and therefore the edges are easier to follow. So now let's create a transition that's actually seamless. So it actually looks like the camera just panned from one clip to the other. So I have these three separate clips. How do I make it look like it was one take? What I can do is go to the last frame of the first clip. Click this camera button to save this frame as an image. Then let's go to the first frame of the second clip and also grab a little snapshot of that. And with the help of AI, we can generate what's in between these two clips and then bring it back into Premiere. In my case, I'm going to be using Artlist, who is the sponsor of this video. And I'm going to be using one of their newer AI models called Kling01. This model will let me import my first and last frame. And after a short prompt, we will get a generated video starting and ending with the two images that we imported. After a few tries, I got these results. I like this one the most. The number at the top did get a little bit weird, but no worries, we can fix that back in Premiere. So here I've added the new generated video between my two clips. To fix that number, I'm going to duplicate the generated video and on the top layer, go to the first frame and then let's freeze it. Then I'll create a simple mask around the number and keyframe the position of the layer to follow the movements of the bottom layer. Then let's nest these two layers together and use time remapping to speed up the transition. And if we add a little bit of directional blur on top, you won't even notice that we did any editing. And honestly, this is the best way to use AI, which is combining generated elements with our own editing skills to achieve the shot that fits our story. So then I'm gonna do the same transition between shot two and three, and this is what we got. So this is what I was able to do with just one of Artless new AI models. Another one is Kling 2.6 Pro, which is great at generating realistic and cinematic videos with audio. I think I figured out what's wrong with you. And if we jump over here to the AI image tab, they just added Sea Dream 4.5, which is great at keeping consistency in photos. So you could do stuff like uploading an image and generating a whole nother angle. Or you can use the hot and powerful Nano Banana Pro to generate realistic photos and make edits to existing ones and we can use it to create cool match cuts like this. These are just a few of the many AI models available on Artlist. There's no need to go to multiple websites. It's kind of like a hub hosting all the latest and greatest when it comes to generative AI. And on top of all of this, Artlist has a huge growing library of creative assets made by humans. I mean, take a look at some of the stock videos or even animating templates. These are some top quality stuff. To me, Artlist is the best of both worlds. You get access to the best assets and the best AI models. If any of this sounds good to you, check out Artlist big holiday sale with my affiliate link below. This is a limited time only, plus you'll get two extra months free on me. Thanks so much to Arliss for sponsoring this video. And now let's show you another transition 
the portal transition. The portal transition has been used by some of the biggest channels, and it's not hard to see why. I mean, the seamless transition is just so satisfying to watch. So basically, we're just cutting out part of the video and using that hole as a portal to another video. So in the timeline here, I have close-up footage of an eye. And what I'm gonna do is pick the object mask tool and then draw around the iris. Once I'm happy with the selection, we can track forward. Then let's drag it down to opacity to create a cutout. I'm gonna duplicate this layer and on the bottom one, let's invert the mask. Let's also add a bit of feathering on both layers to smoothen out the edges. Doing this right now might introduce some black areas around the mask, but we can quickly fix this by expanding the mask on the top layer just a little bit to cover up those black areas. And there we go. Now currently we have two layers. The top one only has the iris while the bottom one has the whole cutout. Let's move these two layers up and add the second shot underneath. I pick this footage of a boat going in circles to match the circular shape of the eye. So now we can animate these layers separately by using some of the new effects in Premiere. On the bottom eye layer, I'm going to add a simple zoom blur just to the end here, and then also at the start of the second clip. So if I hide the top layer for now, we get this simple animation zooming into the hole in the eye revealing the second shot inside. So let's re-enable the top layer again, and I'll add in the motion camera transition to the end of the layer. Now this is a really powerful transition that lets you create complicated animation without any keyframes. But instead of going in depth with all of these settings right now, I'll just use the surprise me button to try out a couple results until I find the one that I like. And here we go. I also did the same transition using other footage, this time cutting out the whole subject. I use the flip motion transition and move the center to the bottom of the frame so our subject can flip down while I use the travel motion transition to pull the background up, revealing the second shot underneath. Being able to quickly cut out subjects or objects in your video inside of Premiere is probably one of the most useful updates that have come to Premiere in a while. And of course, remember, if you need to do more complex masking, you can always use After Effects Rotobrush tool. That's why it exists for more complicated VFX shots. So I hope you found this video inspirational for some new ideas in your video edits. And if it helped you out, be sure to gently tap, not smash that like button because hey, let's be gentle and just tap that little like button there. And also, if you haven't yet, please subscribe to the channel. I don't usually like asking for subscription to the channel, but it does help growing the community and I appreciate your support greatly. To learn even more cool transitions, watch this video right over here. And as always, keep creating better video with Gal. See you next time. Bye. Woo!